thank you for joining us today on this fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. I know you notice there's a big difference between this week and last week. I'm all alled up, am I? And we're not, uh, we don't have all of our pyramids up today. Some weeks you just do the best that you can. And this is one of those weeks we are doing the best that we can. And we hope that this will still be a lovely service for you. It will not be the same as previous weeks, but I trust it will still be a blessing to you, nevertheless. So we, that does mean we do continue to invite your prayers for us, for our family, and these are certainly been challenging weeks. Uh, a couple of other announcements. We're heading into Easter. A week from today is Palm Sunday. Hard to imagine. A couple of things about that. Uh, Palm Sunday, we have a couple of services. We hope that you will come and join us for those services. But then that means the week after that is Holy Week. Lots of special things taking place, special services that will all be announced on our Facebook pages, also in our bulletin. We hope that you will come for those, week, uh, those services of Holy Week, Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. But we will also provide a, uh, in addition to the in-person, we also provide something for you online. So never fear, we are not forgetting you. And also on Good Friday, same thing. We will provide something for you online, but we will also provide an in-person worship opportunity. And of course, Easter Sunday, great celebration, and looking forward to that. I will also tell you, this coming Tuesday is the last Tuesday that we will have a, an in-person Bible study for several weeks. Many of you are aware that I'm a track and field coach as well as being a pastor and one of my responsibilities is taking the kids to track meet so we will not this tuesday will be an in-person tuesday service but the three weeks after that the next three consecutive weeks after that we will not have a tuesday bible study never fear i will not forget you we will still have an online service for you that is it as far as the announcements go our service is going to be a little bit shorter a little bit different today as i said i trust it will be still a blessing to you so we begin our service day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's begin with our song of the day. We'll start with the We Fall Down, Ella. So. We fall down. at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of mercy and love, at the feet of Jesus, we cry holy, 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 we cry holy, 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 we cry holy, 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 again for the blessings of this day. Despite the challenges that we may face, you are still with us. And so there are many things upon our hearts, occasions that bring us to tears, hardships in our personal lives, hardships in this world. We continue to seek on behalf of the people of Ukraine your intervention, your peace, your justice to be one. We also lift up those concerns we have closer to home, the heartaches in our lives, the weariness of life. Sometimes it's not any one thing, it's just the weariness of these days. We confess to you, God, that we have contributed to the hardships of others and created some problems for ourselves. We ask your forgiveness, 
when we've broken our relationship with you and with each other, when we've broken our relationship with ourselves, we also seek, God, a restoration to these relationships. So we might, we might walk this journey of life with you and together with our partners in Christ that surround us. And loving those again, with whom maybe in the past we've struggled, but we believe in your miraculous intervention to bring us together as your people of God. And so God, you know all of the hardships and pains in our lives this day. We just take one moment to confess all those things to you. We commend all these cares to you today. Trust in your good and kind and merciful God. It's not a promise that bad things won't happen. You know all the hardships of our lives, and you walk with us, and for that, we give thanks. And so we have victory, because you bring us through. For that, we give thanks. All the bitter, weary way, and the striving day by day, you barely have the strength to pray in the Bible.
So many people struggle with burdens that you know nothing about. They may look just fine to you, but behind the scenes, things going on in their lives, chaos in their homes, perhaps things that you just don't see physically with which they're struggling. So I'm inviting you today to be kind. Because see, that's, that's what the church is about. We are about being kind to people. Not judgment, not in judgment, condemning everybody to hell, but in love, inviting people to Christ. Do you see the difference? You're going to hell because you sin. Invite, come to Christ. God wants something good. That's what we're actually looking at today. Maybe you've got some heartaches. Well, you know what? Today, we're actually going to look at happiness. So maybe your life has just been filled with a lot of heartaches. We're going to talk about happiness. We've been talking about emotions over these last few weeks. And it seems like the last four weeks have been really pejorative type emotions. Anger. Oh, that's a tough one. Fear. Well, I told you when we began this, all of these emotions are gifts of God created for a purpose to protect you from harm. But there are also emotions that are meant to open us up to blessing. Today's emotion is meant to open us up to the blessing that God wants to put upon our lives. And this is the emotion of happiness. So let me read our lesson for today, and then we're going to take a look at what we got. You do have a sermon handout that is posted on your Facebook page. You're welcome to download that if you want, or don't bother if you don't. Don't really care. It's whatever works for you. Jesus <clears throat> and his disciples were at Passover. So therefore, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, and they were headed towards Passover, pardon me, uh, the man whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a dinner there, and Martha was serving, and Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary took a pound of a very expensive perfume, not pure nard, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who intended to betray Jesus, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the proceeds given to poor people? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he kept the money box, he used to steal from what was put into it. Therefore Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless the lesson that we receive today with joy and gladness, for you ask us in your precious name. Amen. Happiness. We're going to talk about happiness today. Happiness. Turn that frown upside down, right? You know, uh, the definition according to uh, the APA Dictionary of Psychology is... The experience of joy, contentment, positive well-being combined with the sense that one's life is good, meaningful, and worthwhile. Huh, wouldn't that be great every single day to feel that way? How do you become happy? What do you do to become happiness? Happiness, for the most part, when we think of happiness, is by definition dependent upon the happenstances, the experiences of life. Either the experiences that you have in life are happy or they're not. Either you're out of Kennywood having a great time riding the roller coasters and you're happy, or gosh, you're trudging through some horrible time in your life and you're not happy. And that, that smile is turned upside down to a frown. We need to celebrate in those happy circumstances of life, and that's what our lesson was about today. We'll get to it in a moment. But these happy circumstances of life, birthdays, Christmas, celebrations, 4th of July, you know, uh, all of these different celebrations that we mark the seasons of life are really important. I know a lot of people say, oh, come on, you know, Valentine's Day, it's just Valentine's Day, it's just another day. It's made up by the uh, car companies. Who cares where it came from? By the way, that's not true but we believe it to be true, so we use an excuse not to celebrate it. Why is it such a bad thing to celebrate in your life? Maybe you haven't found a love of your life, but there are people whom you love. 
every opportunity to celebrate and bring some happiness into your life is something that we should grasp and hold on because we don't always have those opportunities. So who cares if the car companies want to make another 10 holidays to put in our, our yearly season, I'm all for it, okay? We need to grab hold of these seasons of happiness that connect us with other people. They give our life meaning beyond the daily grind. You know, it's like our life right now is just going through grind, grind, grind. Every single day seems exactly the same. And it's frustrating. There's nothing to set it apart. These celebrations bring some, just at least even for a moment, even for that hour, that birthday cake, and we blow out the candle, even that hour, we're surrounded by people who love us. That's a great thing. Don't shortchange those. Especially, especially when you don't feel like celebrating. Those are the days to celebrate. Unfortunately, these types of celebrations are temporary. They're circumstantial. And that circumstantial contentment is only temporary. Amusement, excitement, celebrations, they always come to an end. All too short, quickly. And then, the hardships of life overwhelm us. And our brief respite is gone. So it does happen. That's why you need to grab a hold of those opportunities when we come. But happiness that is not based upon the happenstances of life is what this definition and the APA, Dictionary of Psychology, is all about. There's something beyond this, a contentment, a peace that transcends the circumstances of our life. Where do I buy that? How do I get into that? Give me some of that, huh? It's that next level contentment of calm, of joy, of peace, I believe that this is something that Jesus Christ comes to bring into our life. When Jesus Christ comes to bring that calm, that peace, that joy into our life, it is a happiness that is no longer tethered to the circumstances of our life. Listen to, you know, let me just read something here. St. Paul, book of Philippians chapter 1. St. Paul says, for me to live, to, for to me, to live as Christ, die is gain. If I am alive, if I live in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. If I, and I do not know which to choose, but I'm hard-pressed both directions. Having the desire to part to be with Christ, that is very much better. Yet to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that your pride in Christ may be abundant because of me, by my coming to you again. Let me tell you something about this lesson. Several days after Paul wrote this lesson, he was dead. He was beheaded, executed, for Christ's sake. He had been in prison. He was almost certainly sure that this was going to happen to him. But yet, listen to the message that he communicated. Does that, does that kind of transform how you read that lesson right now? He was content, whether he lived, whether he died. Oh, Paul had troubles, but Paul had joy and peace. Boy, I get ticked off when I stub my toe. Oh, my whole day has fallen to pieces. Paul was in prison, facing death, and yet he was content whether he lived or whether he died. Where did that come from? Paul says that his contentment transcends his circumstances and his materialistic potentiality, i.e. the flesh. So his contentment was not based on material blessings or the surroundings that he was in in life. He was in a cold cell, living on a cold, hard floor, but he was contentment. His contentment was found where? In Jesus Christ. Because of this contentment, Paul could live a meaningful life regardless of what his future, what he faced in his future. And if he lived, he would be able to help others find their joy in Christ, and that made him content. If he died, well, he found his peace in Christ there too. It was a win-win situation for Paul. I wish I could look at things that way. I don't always. As I mentioned to you, by the way, remember, Paul was in prison when he wrote this, facing the death penalty, and was dead a few days after this. So contentment, here's what we learned in that lesson. Contentment, Paul says, leads to gratitude. 
which leads to giving. Because we are content, we are at peace because of what Christ has brought in our life, we are filled with gratitude. Those who are filled with gratitude want to pour their life out to be a blessing to other people. We give to others expecting nothing in return. We're never counting the cost because it's our way of saying thank you to God. I have no meaningful way to give to God except by caring for the people that God has placed in my life along this journey of life. That's what Paul said. God has placed you in my life. He was saying to the Philippians, and this is how I please God and say thank you to God by blessing you in your journey and your relationship with God. So we live our lives in a meaningful manner that then transcends the materialistic nature of this world because it ain't about the money, people. It's about the love that God has placed in our lives, our gratitude for God, the peace and the calm it brings to us. We live then our lives for others. So this is, this is what Paul is trying to say. And in today's lesson, we see another example of happiness at work. In who? Of all people, Mary. Just a, a short time before, she was pretty ticked off with Jesus for allowing her brother to die. But Jesus, out of his love and kindness for her, raised Lazarus from the dead. She was grateful for this gift that Jesus had given her. And so out of her love and joy and thankfulness, her happiness of this moment, of her brother being there, of her being in the presence of Jesus Christ, he anointed his feet with oil and wiped her, his feet with her, with her hair. And uh, this act of generosity is a ridiculous generosity because this was a very expensive ointment that she put on his feet. But this very act of generosity is a result of two things. Again, her gratitude for her brother's return to life, Lazarus, and the gift of Jesus' love and friendship for her. Now, Judas, he was being a real jerk about this. <laughs> Judas attempted to put her into her place, to put a pin in Mary's bubble, and destroy the moment of happiness that she had being in the presence of Jesus and celebrating her brother's return. But Jesus doesn't allow her to steal this moment by this overly zealous Judas. Don't be a jerk, okay, Judas? And I'm here to tell you this. Don't you be a jerk and try to steal other people's happiness. I can tell you, I have met people who really, I don't know, they relish putting a pin in other people's happiness whenever they can. Don't be that jerk. Don't be that Judas. You know, again, I've met people who can't tolerate seeing people happy, maybe because they're not happy in their own life. They're always trying to bring everybody down with everything that they say. And they see somebody happy, they say, oh, well, let me set you straight. Don't you be the one that pulls a rug out from underneath a happy person's life with the excuse, I'm just trying to bring you back to reality. Just stop. God wants us to celebrate and enjoy those moments when we have them. So if you're not a happy person and you see other people happy and you can't be happy for them, just get out of the way. Don't you be the person who puts a pin in their happiness. Let others be happy. Because it's sometimes such a hard thing. But here's what Jesus says. He has come to bring us not just happiness and contentment with, from the circumstances, but even in those difficult days, to bring us joy, peace, and contentment. That that might be our reality every single day in Jesus Christ. It's not a materialistic happiness. It's a transcendent contentment that we know that have that we have because that God loves us. So you might be right now or know people, and actually we do have people in our church who do know people who are in Ukraine right now. Relatives of one of our family are in Ukraine, and oh, by the way, barely got out with their lives. So there are some people for whom their world is literally collapsing in around them, like the buildings in which bombs are dropped. But yet they have peace and contentment. And in those moments, we can be God's hands to bless them. If you wonder about this, I'm encouraging you as your devotional life today, this week, read Psalm 91. It will really bless you richly. Psalm 9, pardon me, uh, about what happens when the whole world collapses around us. And how we can have peace and contentment even though the whole world is blowing up around us. 
So here's how you discover that type of contentment. I'm not completely there yet. I'm a work in progress. But here's how we get it. A deeper relationship with Jesus Christ that will extend our happiness beyond the circumstances of this life. So that we now no longer are slaves to the circumstances and the whims of the happenstances of life. But because of Christ's presence, we have a contentment that permeates every moment of our lives. Good, bad, indifferent. We are indefatigable. I love that word in Christ. We have a tireless persistence, whatever the circumstances might be, because we know that Jesus Christ is with us. Today might not end up very well. It might be a horrible, awful, terrible day. We might lose loved ones. Crappy things happen. But there always is another tomorrow, even in death, because our contentment comes in Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a contentment that transcends the circumstances of this materialistic world. Yet so often we spend so much time chasing dreams and materialistic concerns to surround ourselves with, with comforts and pleasures. But these things are temporary at best. Oh, we should grab a hold of the, the, the happy circumstances when we can. But you want something more for us. You want something that transcends these moments even in the difficult times. So I'm praying, God, that your spirit would fall upon all those who are listening to the sermon today, all those at home. No matter what their circumstances might be, that you might give them a peace and a calm and a joy that transcends whatever circumstances they might be living through right now. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm inviting God's blessing on you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you his peace, courage, and strength in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you go in peace this day and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessings to you. I look forward to seeing you next week. We will have a more full service for you next week on Palm Sunday. Blessings to you.